two over here, unit three is to the left, unit two is to the right. Uh, we'll get a chance to look at it. I have a, a, a kind of an exploded diagram of the uh, LM6000, which is uh, it's a GE747 jet engine, is what it is. Uh, and so that's, that's, this is where you're going to get your tour for Unit 2. But we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. What I wanted to show you is something more about Unit 1. I just want to bring you over and take a look at this I do. These are the beams that we use to tear the turbine apart. And I've got some numbers, I had to put them down here so you can understand it. The turbine shaft weighs 35,000 pounds. The uh, generator rotor weighs 70,000 pounds. The turbine case, which goes around the outside, is 110,000 pounds. The generator stator is 314,000 pounds. And the whole assembly, the generator and turbine, are 750,000 pounds. Three quarters of a million pounds is how that works. Let's go take a look at this thing as we look at it. You'll notice as we go over here that the generator and turbine are on, the, on, on a breakaway. You see a little, a, a little cat that it sits on. The reason being is that the generator and turbine are on their own foundation. The foundation goes 47 feet into the ground and it's on its own foundation. So when this building gets pushed around by wind, or earthquake, or tornadoes, or hurricanes, this sits independent on itself. Let me open these up so you get an idea of what the inside of the high pressure turbine is. And we have insulation on here. Go ahead and take a look, I'll talk behind you if you don't mind. The steam comes in. 1,800 pounds per square inch, and it spins the shaft, and it turns mechanical energy into electrical energy. We have a high pressure and intermediate pressure. This would be the high pressure side of the turbine and control valves. Intermediate pressure here, and then it, it kind of, those big valves or big gray pipes that go over there, they're going to cross over tubes. The steam will go back through and exhaust underneath. And if you look underneath us, which you really can't see, is that rounded pipe where all the water from the lake comes in. And so it takes the steam at that power and pressure and pushes it on through and exhausts in, and then it channel channels back through to go back into steam on the other side. If you look here, this turbine and generator are hard coupled. There is a coupling, and it's on what's called turning gear right now. It's rotating on a very thin film of if you sat too long in one spot, the weight of the rotor and the weight of the shaft would get both. And then when you turn it on and start throwing steam through it, you get this rub. It goes boom, boom, boom. That happened to me at Atkins. I was putting on Unit 5, and I was in a little bit too much of a hurry. I didn't get a chance to warm up, and it was shaking the whole building. The people across the street heard it, and it was only a 38 megawatt. It wasn't really a big unit, but anyway, you had to bring it back down. And do it the right way. I get the location. So. Anyway, that's hard coupling. This is the generator here. The generator is rated at 112 million watts of power an hour. Because of its age, because of the turbine, we can usually squeeze out, I think, 107 is what, our, what we ran last uh, summer, or this summer is 107. There's the faceplate for it, if you want to take a look at it. Give you some ideas of it. It's a hydrogen cool generator. We use ultra pure hydrogen to cool down the inside of the windings. And so the older ones are air generators. The two out there are air cooled. They have air circulating through them all the time. Uh, what we have going through is, is hydrogen. That enables us to get higher megawatts and to thereby reduces, reduce the, uh, uh, the, uh, the heat that's involved, the stretching that's involved. Let's walk around here. I want to show you the cider. I think this is pretty cool. Back in 18, well, let's see, 1861, 
Michael Faraday was doing experiments. Uh, all that. Remember that today? 1881. What? In 1881, actually 1883 in November, Michael Faraday stood before the Royal Society of, uh, of England. And he took a child's bar magnet and he had a loop of wires or a little voltmeter. My arm was both on one side, both on one side. And he took that bar magnet and he went back and forth in between and he proved that that the magnet was a magnet, was a magnet, it was a field. And that by moving the bar back and forth through the wires, you're able to generate an electric field, induce an electric field. Nothing's changed. Tesla came along, Westinghouse really did a good job. Edison, an amazing man. And I like, for my money, Westinghouse, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so what do you expect? That's all right, anyway. Ah, well, actually, it's not stuff. But anyway, I, what he did is the same thing. Now, what we're doing here is, if you look inside, you'll see little brushes. They're carbon brushes. Let me point them out to you. You may have to kind of jump back and forth on them. The carbon brushes are right inside. They're very, and if you see them, kind of step back so other people can see them. And you can see it's very polished. This is the only contact, the only physical contact that this shaft has with anything in the plant. Everything else is riding on a thin film. You can see the oil going through here. This is one of the number four bearings, or number six, or five bearings, is what this is. And so it's riding on oil, but that carbon is excited by that unit, that box behind that gray box. A strong DC charge is shot through this, shot through this exciter, yeah. uh, this stator, the stator's out here. What's this called? Rotor. 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 Thank you, thank you, Dan. You want to work here? <laughs> And the rotor is made of, of, of laminated, they're, they're sealed, but they're laminated copper bars. They're not wires, but they're bars. And as it spins, as it's excited, depending on the ex excitation that we are able to pull out of it, it uh, an electric field is induced and it is absorbed or thrown off, if you will. And I don't still understand that. I've tried to read on that. If you all can explain to me how electricity got, gets from the stator or the rotor to the stator, I'd love to hear that. I don't think anybody really knows. But inside, there are also flat bars. Those bars are gathered together, and there are power couplings. So we're going to go down and see those power couplings as we get out here. That goes out here. It goes to a step-up generator. This, this is a 13, 13 13.8 kilowatt generator. And from 13.8 kilowatts, we take it out here to a 69 transformer. It steps it up and takes it on out to the grid, and there it's for use on that. But I wanted to show you that because this is where the magic happens. It literally, to me, is magic. I don't understand it, but it's pretty cool. So, anyone else want to take a look? I'm going to shut her up. Uh, no, the, uh, well, the exciter generate, this generator runs at 18, 1380. 13,000. You see there? Everyone in? All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to get the tool and wind it down, so follow me and we'll head down to the uh, You wonder about the breakers that you have, you know, when your lights go out and you go out to your breakers and figure what they are? These are the breakers that are used for the big motors. And this is 12.5 kilovolts. So 12,500 volts right here. So those are a little bigger than 30 amp fuses or 60 amp fuses. So that's what they are. You can see what they are for all the big motors we have.